Hello, my name is Kent and I am a Qt developer. In this video I'm going to tell you about something called Qt Script. What you're about to see is loosely based on the Qt Script talks that I gave at Trolltech Developer Days 2007. The full presentation slides and the associated source code is available at labs.trolltech.com. So, what is this Qt Script thing anyway? Well, Qt Script gives you, as a Qt C++ application developer, a simple yet powerful way of embedding scripting into your application. The benefits of application scripting are well covered in other media, so I won't go into detail about that here. What I will do instead is give a small tutorial on how you might go about integrating Qt Script into an existing Qt application. I want to show you the core concepts and techniques that you will be using when integrating Qt Script into your own application. Now the application I've chosen to work with should be well known to Qt users. It's Qt Assistant, a tool for presenting and searching documentation, including Qt's own documentation of course. Now what I'm going to do is use Qt Script to make relevant parts of the functionality in Qt Assistant available to script writers. So, for example, a script will be able to load up a new page of documentation, query the browsing history, or initiate a search. Not terribly useful, perhaps, but after I've shown you this, hopefully you'll have an idea of what Qt Script can do for you out of the box. Okay, so the very first thing we have to do is specify that we want to use Qt Script in our application. To do that, we open up the application's QMake project file, in this case, assistant.pro, and we add the following line of text to that file Qt plus equals script. Just save the file and that actually completes the first part of this tutorial. As you can see, Qt Script is just a module in Qt. So you can just add this line to any project you have that uses Qt version 4.3 or later and you can immediately start using the Qt Script API in your code. Okay, moving on to the next step. I've made a simple dialog in Qt Designer that will enable users to enter scripts in Assistant. The dialog is pretty basic. It has a text edit for entering scripts, and it has an evaluate button for executing the scripts, and it has a label for displaying status messages. What I will do is add this dialog to the main window UI in Qt Assistant. So I open up the main window UI, and I'm going to add a new menu, which I will call Tools. I'm creating a menu item here called Script Console. So the idea is that when the user selects this item, we will pop up our dialog for entering scripts. Now let's look at the related additions to the application's code. First of all, in the QMake project file, I have added three lines. One is for the dialog that I designed in Qt Designer and the other two is the implementation of that dialog. In Assistant's main window.h file I have added a script console member representing an instance of this dialog. I have also added a slot that will be triggered when the script console menu item is selected. In the slot implementation in main window.cpp we create the dialog if we haven't done so already and we show the dialog. Finally, let's look at the implementation of the script dialog itself. As you can see, it's really not much code. The dialog has a script engine member that we will use to evaluate scripts. Before evaluating any scripts, however, we want to configure the script engine to make it serve our purpose. In this case, this means exposing an API to Qt Assistant's browser component. The way we do that here is to call the script engine's new QObject function passing a pointer to the browser as argument. NewQobject will return a proxy script object 
that scripts can use to access properties and call slots of the underlying queue object. This is a key feature of Qt Script that you will be relying on when creating your own scripting APIs. We add the proxy object as a global variable and that actually completes the configuration. So here's the slot that is executed when the user clicks the evaluate button of the dialog. We extract the contents of the text edit and we pass it to the script engine's evaluate function. We convert the resulting script value to its string representation and display it in the label, giving it a nice red color if an error occurred. For instance, if there was a syntax error in the script. Okay, I've compiled this thing and I'm ready to give it a bit of a try. I bring up the script console dialog and I type in browser, which is the name of the global variable I added when configuring my script engine. I evaluate this simple script and the status message says that it is indeed a tab browser instance. Great, so now what? Well, let's look at the definition of the tab browser class. Here we can see the slots that are defined in this class. As I said, these slots will automatically become available to scripts so let's try calling a few of them. We can call the zoom in slot to zoom in on the document. We call zoom out to zoom out again. Without scripting support, you would have to use the zoom buttons to accomplish the same thing. We can switch between tabs by calling next tab and previous tab. Now if we search for some text in the document, say bool, we can call the find next slot to find the next occurrence. We can do so repeatedly. And of course, we can call find previous to find the previous occurrence. By default, Qt Script exposes the properties, signals, and slots defined in the superclass of your queue object. Qt Assistant's browser component is a subclass of Qt Widget, so have a look at the Qt Widget documentation to see what is available to scripts. We can, for instance, set the what's this property of the browser to something helpful. We have now seen how we can take an existing Qt C++ application that wasn't even designed with scripting in mind and add a basic scripting interface to it without having to write much code. To recap, add Qt plus equals script to your QMake project file, include the main Qt script header file in your CPP files, create a QScript engine instance, expose one or more Q objects that offer an API specific to your application, and finally provide a mechanism for feeding the engine with scripts. That's it for this tutorial. For more information, check out the QScript documentation and keep an eye out for scripting related entries in the Trolltech Labs blogs and in the Qt quarterly newsletter. Again, slides and code for all the Developer Days 2007 presentations can be found on labs.troltech.com. I thank you for your attention and I wish you much success with Qt Script.